Hi folks, my name is Gemma Skalici. I'm a colorist here at Uhert in Oslo, Norway. I hope you're all well and safe during these rather interesting times. Um, today I'm going to be taking part in Filmlight's Tips and Tricks series, uh, talking a little bit about my experiences as a colorist and also showing you a few tips and tricks on base light. I started off in post-production uh, in my early 20s um, in Istanbul, in Turkey. Um, I started as an editing assistant and then I started doing compositing and moved on to becoming a flame op. Um, then um, a company that I was working for basically had bought a telecine at the time and they needed a, a colorist assistant. And this was at the time when you know they had telecines, so it was 16 and 35 millimeter transfer. You needed to kind of um, lace up the film on the machine um, and someone needed to do one lights, which I eventually started doing. And then with that, uh, with over time, I started doing best lights and eventually moving on to music videos and commercials. Um, I worked in uh, a couple of facilities in Istanbul um, and then I felt like I needed to move on and uh, I got a job offer in Copenhagen at Digital Film Lab which uh, at the time was really, uh, they were really at the forefront of doing DI and I think that was a great experience for me um, at the time, I think I was in my mid-twenties. And then after that it was just basically a, a long journey of uh, 15 years, um, moving from country to country and market to market and getting a sense for, for different places and, and tastes. First tip I have is with regards to shots view um, and this is actually quite helpful when you're doing long formats uh, like a TV series or, or a feature and normally what tends to happen is there's always kind of one dialogue sequence between two or multiple actors and we're cutting back and forth between them and occasionally it happens where they've used a bit of smoke on set and it's a little bit uneven during takes. Uh, between different takes or um, the light is changing if they've shot outside and um, what I'm going to show you is basically in shots view there's actually a clever way of doing um, a C mode style working uh, which basically allows you to jump between um, sort of the different uh, the different takes um, so what we have here right now I just have like a basic grade on on her and what I'll just do very quickly here is just kind of copy that grade go into shots view now normally everything is in event order obviously you could change this by source and so on and so forth um, but in this case what I want to do is actually sort things out in clip say for instance now you can see that the time codes here this is just a very kind of random um, cut that I did uh, but you can see here that uh, there's two shots in event three and five. Now, if you want to grade this normally, what you would have to do is you'd have to kind of go to the next shot, next shot, paste it in. But it's it's a little bit cumbersome if you want to kind of compare these two. So a clever way of doing it is if you activate playback navigation, and now if you jump between the shots, you'll see that it's actually, now you, it's a lot easier to uh, grade the two let's call them takes, they're not separate takes because I didn't really um, have any here, but um, yeah, so this is actually quite handy in that regards. Uh, and then it's also a lot easier to now jump through all of her shots as well. So it's easy to copy and paste these and you could see already like these two shots, the sun's changed a little bit. Um, and then you could kind of go ahead and you could close this, you don't need that actually on, you could still because that mode is constantly activated. Um, so then you could go into um, into base grade, compare, okay, it needs to be a little bit cooler. Let's just kind of roughly do this. I'm doing this with the mouse here, so don't judge me. Um, but yeah, so you, know, you, you get the idea. It makes life a lot easier if you have, say, a three, four, or five minute long sequence and you just want to even things out very, very quickly. Uh, this is actually quite a cool way of, uh, of making your life a bit easier. So uh, yeah, that's tip number one. Uh, a lot
lot. Um, obviously, color management and the color tools is like base grade as a given. Um, but I think most importantly is the stability and the performance. Um, at the end of the day, you know, all systems crash to a certain extent. Uh, but I think the most important thing is that you don't lose um, any work that's that's been done. In the years that I've been a base light colorist, I haven't lost a single frame of any of the work that I've done. I mean, the system does crash. You reopen base light and you pick up from where you left off. And I think that's really important when clients are paying by the hour and you really don't want to lose, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes of, of the work that's been done. Um, on top of that, I think, you know, finishing tools and tools like Texture Equalizer, I think, are fantastic, especially when um, people expect more in grade. Uh, with Texture Equalizer, you could use it, use it for so many different things. You could use it for matching the texture of two, two different lenses. Um, uh, you, know, you could use it as part of your look creation. Uh, you could even use it for fixing um, spots and removing uh, objects in a, in a frame. Um, so it's a very powerful tool. And I think that's kind of one of the great things is uh, over, the, over the years, FilmWise really done a lot in terms of implementing a lot of um, finishing um, tools, which I think is, is really important these days. Um, the next thing is obviously um, support uh, that, um, you know, in this industry, you tend to work really odd hours, uh, long hours. And if something doesn't work, um, usually you want someone to have an answer. Uh, and um, uh, that's the great thing with Filmlight is, you know, it doesn't matter what time of day, what day it is. Um, you know, I can write an email or call support and there's someone somewhere, either it's, you know, London or LA or, you know, elsewhere in Asia that can uh, come up to, uh, come to the rescue and, and help you, help you fix, fix whatever that's uh, causing a, a problem. And um, I think, you know, the other big thing is, of course, as, as a base light colorist, I don't really feel like an end user. I feel like I'm part of something bigger. Um, that I'm not just, uh, you know, a, a colors just pushing buttons. I'm, I'm part of exchanging ideas and thoughts. And I think that's the great thing with Filmlight is um, I have access to so many uh, great people there and, and that aren't shy in sharing knowledge and answering questions. And I think that's the great thing is I don't feel static. Um, you know, that they're constantly evolving and, you know, bringing things like base grade, um, really kind of helps you you know develop as a colorist and, and 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 evolve as a colorist and also like look at color grading in different ways also um and i think that's it's really great um you know that you can share ideas and thoughts and and yeah really grow My second tip is uh, with regards to look creation and um, what tends to happen is um, in the heat of the moment you start adding layers and operators and um, someone down the line basically wants us to maybe split the difference in, in the look. And this tends to get a bit tricky, um, especially if you have a bit of a complicated stack. Um, so I'll just make a stack here for us to kind of... Um, see see what tends to happen so in this case i got a very basic grade uh, this was just kind of basic primaries um, second layer we'll just kind of say okay well there was a comment on on his jacket and we we'll just want to kind of make that sort of purple uh, i'm not going to bother with garbage masks here for the demo but um yeah uh, and then the second comment was maybe adding something like a S curve of sorts, just kind of very basic and rough here. Uh, and then on top of that, let's just say we wanted some more saturation in the shot, and as well as potentially, let's say we use texture equalizer. Again, this is just very, very kind of random here. And then finally, um, we wanted to come up with, you know, some something a bit bit more extreme and we went with something along the lines of of this for our um our look so um everyone's happy except like i said someone throws the idea of splitting the difference on on the look that we've we've achieved now 
it's obviously easy to kind of play with the opacity of of the jacket and then same with um, the opacity of the s-curve however you know and same with boost color you could say to a certain extent you could dial that down to to whatever you want but things get a bit tricky when you have something with a lot of parameters say with uh, texture equalizer or color crosstalk and uh, this is kind of a neat way of, of um, splitting the difference on on the on the stack here so once we've add, added the blend mode or the blend operator uh, you'll see that there's a question mark here uh, asking for a reference strip let's just go ahead and add one and move this so it includes basically all these strips and operators. And I'm just gonna rename this here so we have a clever way of differentiating this reference strip for the key of the jacket and the blend modes reference. Um, so right now, as you can see, if we dial this down, uh, we'll essentially get um, layer one as a, as a final output. And I'll just add a second cursor here so we can kind of compare the two as you can see they are identical um, so and basically you could move this around so let's just say we wanted to keep the the jacket and the the the, the curve but we wanted to kind of dial down on all of these three operators then basically you move down the uh, reference blend uh, strip and let's just point to the output of of uh, the, the the curve grade, and then now if we dial this up and down, you'll see that we're just essentially blending the combination of boost color, texture equalizer, and color crosstalk. Um, so this is actually quite handy. Uh, again, um, if we go into cursor two, you'll see that the um sorry the outputs match i hope this is useful and have a good day tell us any it was the best school uh when it was still around and, and film was predominant uh now obviously with digital formats things have changed a lot um i would say the best school is, is being a dit um simply because you get access to different camera formats, lenses, you get to talk to DPs and directors. Um, however, um, that's just, you know, one part of the job. Um, I think, um, uh, you know, there's still color theory and color harmony that I think comes with time. Uh, and you just need to develop a, an eye for it. Um, and the other big part, especially is when you're in the grading room, things work differently. Um, there's clients, it's not just yourself. Um, and you basically have to be able to understand them uh, and work with them. And, um, and that's really the big part of the job is the communication. Um, and to be able to offer options on the spot, three, four or five different options. Uh, and I think that really comes with time. Um, but uh, communication is, is really the, the main thing that I think for newcomers is, is, is the biggest challenge because if you're on set, you've been on, you, if you work as a DIT or even as a daily scholarist, the, 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 um, the method in, in which you work is a different pace than when you're here and you have clients uh, right behind you expecting something to be um, kind of uh, delivered or, or understood then and there. Stay hungry, but be patient.